Very Until good. later. All right. So we'll now we're continuing. We're, we're concluding what we learned in Devar Malchut. In Devar Malchut. You know, I got this idea here. One second. I've got this idea to get rid of the glare. One second. Let's try this. Let's just try this. Getting rid of the glare. Will this work? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, get, get rid of the glare. Good. Okay. Good. All right. So. Good. I mean, Baruch Hashem, there's people coming to the class. I, I want, just wanted to say it's it's a very good thing to come a lot of people to come to the class, but it's not essential. There's a famous story from the Rebbe. I don't, I heard the story happen with the Reb Zalman Posner, all of a sudden. That's what I heard. He was an excellent speaker for Chabad. And he was uh, invited to a university to speak. And there was supposed to be several hundred people that were there prepared a speech. And um, he got there, there was only one or two people and the whole audience was empty. What happened? <coughs> it was all bad weather or there was some sort of a big championship, you know, basketball game or some whatever it is, uh, <clears throat> extenuating circumstances that stopped people from coming. So he talked to these people for a little bit, waiting for the, you know, the big crowd to arrive. And he talked to them casually, whatever it was. And he, when they didn't come, so he said, listen, I see that there's no, <clears throat> that the, the people aren't going to come. We'll have to push it off to another time. We'll make a rain check. And they said, yes, and then that's it. So he reported to the Rebbe back what had happened. <clears throat> this is just the way I heard the story. There's different versions of the story, and I heard different versions also, but this is the first way one I heard. <clears throat> anyway, the point is still the same point. All the stories have the same point. <clears throat> he told this to one of the Rebbe's secretaries. I understand it was Rabbi Chodakov. Rabbi Chodakov said, just one moment. He called in on the phone. Or Rabbi Chodakov called to him and asked him how it was, and he said that, told him what happened. You know, only two people came. And Rabbi Chodakov said, just one more, I want to tell, talk to the Rebbe. He spoke to the Rebbe, and he said, the Rebbe said that sometimes if you speak to a crowd of a thousand people, that one person will really understand what you're saying to the degree that he's convinced. Other people might understand it, but they're just now convinced of what you say. You don't convince them of anything. And you had the, 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 the fortune that God sent you those people, those one person, two people, that they would have been changed by your speech. You should have given the whole entire speech. In other words, <coughs> the point is not numbers. It's not numbers, quantity, it's quality. But on the other hand, we, a quantity is very important. Quantity is a very good thing, but it's not essential. The main thing is quality. And if we have quality, then eventually the quantity will come. Not like they're saying that one honest dollar is worth a million dishonest dollars, even though everybody would rather have a million dollars than one dollar. But the message of Judaism is that quantity, truth, is more important than quality. So you have billions and billions of people in the world that believe in all sorts of different religions, and you know, you can't blame them, it's a good thing. Religion is in general, it's a good thing. You believe in a power that's above you, but they're all wrong because their whole idea of what Judaism is and what God is, is incomplete and sufficient. But under, on the other hand, here we got Judaism and you know, according to what Chabad says and how many people in general, forget about Chabad, just how many people generally are you know, religious Jews, very, very few, and how many Jews are there? Even all of them are religious. You know, a very small percentage of the world. But nevertheless, that quantity, at least somebody is doing what's really true. That's the point. That's the point. So you can't look uh, as quantity being the main thing. Quantity is important. But quantity it has to be a result of quality. Okay, let's go. So what did the Rebbe say? This week's Torah portion has in it two sentences right in the middle by he being so our own it was when the ark traveled that moses would say the jewish people when they would 
move in the desert, they move 42 times. Each time the ark, the aron that held the uh, tablets, the broken tablets, and the regular the broken tablets were the ones that Moses broke from the first temple, but from the first, uh, the first time God, the first time, the first time God gave the tablets on Mount Sinai, so Moses broke them, and he went up again for another 120 days, and he received the second tablets. So the the, ta the tablets they traveled in front of the Jewish people. So there's two sentences say when the when the ark traveled, as uh, they would say, <clears throat> the raise up God and scatter your enemies, and when it would come down, the ark would come down. We would say, um, okay, so two sentences. According to some opinions, those two sentences are one full book of the Torah. And that divides the book of Numbers into three books. What's before those two sentences is one book. The two sentences are another book. And what's after that, to the end of the book of Numbers, is a third book, which comes out that according to that, there's two books that are added to the five books of Moses, seven books. That's one opinion. The opinion is not accepted, but it still is an opinion. And if it's an opinion that's written in the Talmud, it's a guy, it comes from God. It's God's opinion. So what's his idea? Why would you even think that there has to be seven? So the Rebbe explains that the whole purpose of the Torah is to be like we read about in our Torah portion, Balotcha, is to make everybody a nair that lights up on its own. Like we were saying, like I started, quality. Every person, notwithstanding who's opposing him or what the odds are, or what everybody else says and what things, I mean, you have to listen to everybody. You have to listen to what people say, but in the end, you have to decide on your own what's the truth. When a person understands really what the truth is, and he realizes that God is really creating him, her, every single person individually, and every individual is important, and every individual is unique, and every individual is indispensable for the welfare of the whole entire universe. So you have to find your uniqueness and your individuality and your connection to God. And the reason why God is keeping you alive. And this is a thing you have to just keep searching. It's not that, oh, I got it. You know, I got it. It's a certain attitude that you have to have toward life, which is no matter what I'm going to do, what it says in the Torah. For the non-Jews, it's the seven Noahide commandments. The example of this was Noah. The whole entire world <laughs> you can't get bigger bigger opposition than that. I mean, Abraham says that the whole world was against him, but Noah it really got bad. You know, it was. I, listen, I mean, it's not a nice thing to say, but that's what's that's the woke movement today. The, the whole entire world was, how do you say, decadent, the, the perverted. The whole world. By it says he shchet called the basar darko al oritz. This is even the animals. Some people say that's where the dinosaurs came from before Noah, before the flood. <clears throat> because everything was debauched, everything was crooked, and people were stealing from each other, and that, that's the whole thing now also with communism. They want to push, try to push communism. But what was communism? It was thievery. You took from people who worked hard, you took what they had. No, because they're the enemies, they're the the uh, the, the capitalists, the whatever, the bourgeois. You have to take away, people don't, you shouldn't have money. If money has to be, so, so that's what happened in the door, a generation right before the flood. And it killed everybody. Well, we're going to have also a flood now, but it's not going to be a flood for bad. So the world is going to be flooded with the knowledge of God. The world is going to be flooded with the knowledge of God. I think I've said this to you maybe 50 times, I don't know. But people write to me all the time. Some lady wrote to me and said that, you know, if you don't accept uh, Christianity, you know, then, then you're going to be burning hell and you're going to get punished and you're going to this and all that. So I wrote her back. There were a, couple, there were a lot of people that wrote me back. Anyway, this lady I wrote back to her. I said, "Listen, when he said, she said Mashiach is going to come, and then you're going to get punished. You're going to be you're going to burn in hell. You're going to this." And so I wrote to her back. I said, "Listen, when the Mashiach that I'm waiting for comes, then it's going to be exactly the opposite. You are going to be really happy. Maybe the first time in your life, you're going to really rejoice and see." How precious you are in God's eyes. Not what you're thinking. <laughs> Another lady wrote to me, said, you're going to burn in hell. I said, if you don't accept the, uh, what you call it, you're for your ideas. 
I said, listen, so I'm going to burn in hell anyway, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that what you're saying is wrong, because I said what she says, you can't speak against, you know, uh, JC, you can't speak against him, you're going to burn in hell. I said, listen, you got, I'm going to burn, according to you, three quarters of the world is going to burn in hell. So, you know, the point is, is that no, everyone is going to realize that they are a flame independent of the whole world. And that God is lighting up everybody individually. Everyone's going to realize this. That's one of the jobs of the Torah. So if so, we have two functions of the Torah. One function is the Torah is holy. And the other function of the Torah is that it makes the world holy. Or we can say in a little bit different way, one function of the world is that it's purely for the Jews, to make the Jews a holy nation, to make the Jews reveal that they're chosen from all the other people. And the other function of the Torah is, is that the Torah has to be used by the Jews for what they're chosen for. The Jews are for, chosen to improve the world. <clears throat> That's the number five and the number seven. The number five <clears throat> is what, there's what's called seven emotions of God. That corresponds, we also have seven emotions. This is in the, in the gamut of the ten spirot, what's called the ten aspects of God. Three of them are intellect. The seven are emotions, but the top five of those seven, that's for ourselves. <clears throat> that's when a person says, I want, I think, right? He points to his heart. That's for yourself. That's the five emotions of, of God, the top five emotions. That's the five books of Moses. And that comes to make the Jewish people holy and to increase this holiness. And the, But the other two, the seven, that's how the Torah comes out into the world and improves the world, fixes up the world. And you have to have both. Here, <clears throat> yeah, you have to have both. One second, one minute, one minute. There we go. Huh? All right, that's better. <clears throat> Alderich says similarly, moving will be understood. So, in other words, this is very individualistic. We're talking about over here that not everybody's going to be the same. In a way, it's the opposite of communism. Right? Communism says everybody's going to be the same. No money, everybody's going to earn the same, and they're going to work the same, they're going to work according to your ability, receive according to your need. And so, but basically, you're going, to, you're going to toe the line, party line, whatever it's called. And here we're saying, no, everyone is going to be different, but you're going to be different according to the guidelines of the Torah. Guidelines of the Torah. Like you have, you know, the, the rules of driving. You have to drive on the right side, the left side. But everybody can go where they want to, right? You want to go to Chicago, go to Chicago. You want to go to Miami, go to Miami. You can go to work, but you have to keep the laws <clears throat> of driving, right? There's speed limits. Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. Drive on the proper side of the road, right? Don't go weaving in and out, right? But except for that, you can go wherever you want to. Same thing with the world. There's seven Noahide commandments are basically guidelines for life how to go, but where you want to go on your own, it's up to you. You want to be a, a, a musician, you want to be a taxi driver, you want to be a street cleaner, you want to be a professor, you want to be a scientist, you want to be a doc, a lawyer, a, a singer, whatever you want, but it has to be according to the guidelines of God, of the creator. Okay. When this happens, then it says that's the purpose of the Torah, not just that everybody just does, but they feel. Everybody feels enthusiastic. That's the thing of a fire. That's this week's Torah portion. Ba'alot Chav. Fire goes up on its own. Alder says, similarly, move and will be understood. But no, Gail, the Parsha, the Moragot, will be understood to something we're going to learn about next week. Next week's Torah portion is what's this? Somebody sent me a message over. What does it say? What does it say? Yes. Now, all right, not to go into the, 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 the gruesome details. Here we go. And our job is to do good, but right? don't. Don't take the example from me of talking about bad things and talking about, I'm giving the class. So, you know, these things, it's right. It is very shocking. The, what's going on in the world is very shocking, but it'll continue that way if we continue just talking about it. We have to do good. Our job is to do good in the face of bad, to be positive in the face of negative, <clears throat> huh? to be kind in the place of cruelty, to be alive in the place where there's, where there's death, to be brave where there's cowardice. Uh, to be patient where there's impatience. <clears throat> Alder says similarly, moving will be understood. 
I don't know. All the Rav Zeh also will be understood by Nogil, the Parshat Moraglim, regarding to the spies. Next week, we're going to learn Parshat Shalach. We're going to read that on Shabbat in the afternoon. Shalach. Now, Shalach, that's really a very, uh, how do you say, a juicy Parsha. It's really quite astounding, this whole, this whole thing. When after that comes Korach, same thing. God does all these things, promises Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, they're going to get the Holy Land, they're going to get the Promised Land. I'm going to take you out of Egypt, you're going to go to the land that's tov, it's with the flowing milk and honey, there's rivers, there's everything, everything you want to is going to go Israel, is just going to be the perfect, godly, wonderful land, you're going to have a holy temple, you're going to be serving me all the time over there, your crops are going to grow and the rains are going to fall in their time. Okay, Jews, we're going to go, right? And everyone said, Okay, Jews, we're going to go. Okay, right? Everyone, let's, let's go, everyone. Hello. Hello. He figured all the Jews would say, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> what are you, what's going on? Did, did you hear me? He said, yeah, listen, Moses, <clears throat> we've been thinking about this. Uh, we decided that, uh, you know what? You go. What? You go. You go. You want to go to the land of Israel, so you go, and we'll we'll follow. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. Not right now. Or right now. I stay in the desert. Moses, I don't believe it. I, this is really, I took you out of Egypt. I gave you the Torah. So did you go into the Holy Land? Doesn't anybody want to go? All the ladies say, yeah, we want to go. We want to go. And the husbands say, oh, that, that, there is, I'll be free of my wife also. I can go and stay in the desert. We can learn Torah. And we can eat manna from heaven and water from a rock. We're staying in the desert. That's next week's Torah portion. Parsha Shalach. And what does shlach mean? Send the Jewish people. They said send in and scouts to go into the land of Israel. So they'll survey the land, and then we'll go in. And when the scouts came back, they said don't go in, and everybody said we're not going in. Back thing first of all, How can it possibly be? The Torah that the Torah tells us all these details about the Moraglim, about these scouts that were sent into the land of Israel. This is talking bad about Jews. How does the Torah portion start? That God says to the Moses, okay, go into the land of Israel. And Moses says, I'm going to send in uh, scouts, surveyors, to look around and see what's going on in the land of Israel so that it'll be easier to conquer or that we'll know where to go. We'll come give a good message back to the Jewish people. And God said, okay, if you want to, shlach lecha, if you want to. So he sent them in. They went in the land of Israel. It says that... <clears throat> that uh, the, uh, Yoshua and Kalev. That Kalev, he went to pray by the graves of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that they should give him power. And Yeshua came back and Kalev, and they said, Yeah, let's go for it. You know, we're gonna, and all the other 10 came back and they said, No way, we're not going to go to the land of Israel. It's a terrible place. And the people said, 10 against 2, we're going to listen to the 10. We're not going in. So it ends up that these 10. Scouts, they were the heads of the Jewish people. So each one was like the head of their tribes. Roshay ben Israel Hamon says they were the heads of the tribes. And it come, they come back with a, a cowardly message, a negative message. And the Torah tells us the Torah is eternal. The Torah is giving us this eternal message that there are these 10 terrible Jews, they were the leaders of the Jewish people, and it even says their names. That You're not allowed to do that. The Torah actually tells the names of these negative, terrible people. Bob is mind at the time that the Torah, and his heritage is very, very careful not to even say a bad thing about an animal. Instead of saying that an animal, these are the impure animals, it says these are the animals that are not pure. Question number one, how can the Torah eternally come and tell us that the Torah is God? How God is telling us <clears throat> that these people were bad, and he's advertising it for all generations. How can the Torah do that? That's next week's Torah portion. Number two, Haftorah. The Haftorah that we read for next week's Torah portion, Shetzarich and Hare, Liyod, Me'inyan Aparshad, which is similar to the topic of the Torah portion, but the bird is talking about the Shlichas Maragli, Cherish, Al Yedei, Yoshua. It says that Yoshua, he sent two spies into the land of Israel. This is like 40 years after, 39, 38 years, something after Moses sent these 
12 spies and it came back was a tragedy. So Yeshua did the same thing. He sent two spies in. And they did good. And they came back and they said, well, you know, let's conquer the land of Israel. And it, and it worked. So they were, the Haftorah talks about what Joshua did. He sent in two spies and they succeeded. They inspired the Jewish people. And Moses sent spies like, what is it, 20, 39 years earlier. And they, it was a terrible catastrophe. And the Torah advertises it. Okay. Yeshlom, we can say that what's why does the Torah even put this the bad thing in there? Why does it put it? How these spies of Moses, Moses failed. Yeshlom, we can say in the and the explanation is a kavana The reason why the Torah tells us the parshas of Meraglim, the story of the story of these unsuccessful scouts of Moses, he is in order in order to tell the Eloi, the highness. The good thing, the unusual good thing that came from these scouts, like it is in the Haftorah. Because the, the spies that Joshua sent, we can say, Shalom, that he learned this from Moses. And Yeshua, it says that Joshua was the faithful pupil of Moses. Who can say Lavana? These are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kepene Alavana, my, it's hard for me to see this one second. Maybe I'll make it bigger. Let's see if it'll work. If I can make this bigger. Oh, no, no, no. I have to go all the way to the top. I don't want to do it. All right, let's see. No, no, something is going on over here. I'm sorry, just one moment. No, no. No, I'm missing something. I wanted to make it bigger. Okay, there we go. It's it's the, the writing, the printing is a little bit blurred over here for me. So sometimes I read the wrong words. All right. <clears throat> so what happened? Moses sent bad spies, but 39 years later, as Joshua sent good spies, good scouts. And it says that Joshua was kepene levana. He was like the face of the moon. Moses, it says, he was the face of the sun. Joshua just reflected everything that Moses had. He, he brought into, how do you say, into reality, into the darkness. Joshua brought that, what Moses had to give. Moses was the face of the sun, and Joshua was the face of the moon. As Nifalot Bemelua Shlichos, that Joshua actually finished doing what Moses did, Vidato. Vedato and, and Moses's uh, how do you say his his goal? It was the same thing as Moses. Moses sent the spies in in order to conquer the land of Israel. Where by him it didn't work, but at least he opened the door. And thirty nine years later, is Joshua sent in his spies, and that they did work, but only on the merit of what what Moses did previously. Kamurgosh, like it's in the Torah, she had Joshua Aya Maragle Moshe. It says that Joshua was one of the spies of Moses. He Joshua was together with Kalev. Milu so they did this the what, what they were supposed to do. At Shomer until it said Tova or it's Maod Maod. They if Joshua came back, there were 10 spies that Moses sent that, that they were came back with a bad message, but two of them came back with a good message. One was Joshua, Yehoshua, and the other one was Kalev. And they came back and they said, the land of Israel is very, very good. The world is good, potentially, but the land of Israel is very, very good. The Yeterim is even more, also the inner intention of the spies was for good. The bad, the 10 bad ones, their intention was good. But Otosha, in that time, they were good, like it says in the, the, in the book, because they were so high, the spies is Ein Lehem Chilek Lo. I'm sorry. Shemitzad Godel Malas because it says that they don't have a portion in the world to come. The ten spies. Terrible thing, right? No, wrong. Kevin Shehem Nalim Yechilek Olamo. They they were higher than the world to come. Why? There were ten spies. They were good. They got a big reward, even higher than the world to come. How? Because of Bezeh. Because it says <clears throat> the the Rebbe explains that what did the spies come back? They wanted to save the Jewish people. 
And they wanted to tell the Jewish people, listen, we're in the desert. God is providing for us. We're learning Torah. The main thing is learning Torah. Let's sit in the desert and learn the Torah. Here, God is protecting us. God is giving us water. God is, God is not, it's not, we're not getting fed by the devil or something. We're getting fed by God himself. God himself is brought, let's stay in the desert. Obviously, that's what God wants. That's what they said. The main thing, if we go into the land of Israel, we're going to have to fight battles. We're going to have to work on the land. We're going to have to waste a lot of time and energy. They wanted for the good of the Jewish people to stay in the desert. Their intention was good, but in fact, it was the opposite of what God wanted. We can see also the idea of we can see this idea of a flame that goes up on its own. By means of this, that Joshua, he learned from Moses to send spies, to send scouts. It says, God said, you are sending the spies Moses on your own. If you, God said, if you ask me, I'm, I, I would not advise you to send the spies, but I agree with your, your choice to send the spies. I agree with your choice. Why? Because I agree with your power of choosing. You can choose, even though I would not make that choice, says God, but you can choose. So it was a big mistake, right? This is no wrong. It wasn't a big mistake. It was opened up the door for Joshua, right? With, almost 40 years later, Say, I'm going to do the same thing as Moses did. I'm going to send spies. But don't you realize what happened to Moses, that it was a tremendous failure? Joshua said, no, it wasn't a failure at all. It was, the, it was the first time. You know, it was an experiment. Didn't work, but mine will work. But you have to send spies. Hari, after that, <clears throat> Joshua, on his own, he sent spies. And this, uh, uh, no, Moses, I'm sorry. Moses, he sent the spies on his own. And they did what they were supposed to do. And Joshua, he was the one that sent the Jewish. So both Moses, they did, he did it on his own. And Joshua learned from that that I'm also going to do it on my own. Instead of interpreting what Moses did in a bad way, I'm going to interpret it in a good way. And I'm going to send in. in now we can say that Joshua is like the face of the moon. Shalavana, that the moon receives from the sun, from Moses. But afterwards it says, he became an, a light on his own. He himself sent spies on his own. That's the thing of the light of the moon, that it illuminates even the darkness. So we can, now we can attach this. So and what did the Rebbe just do? He just learned merit on the 10 spies the bad spies that Moses sent in. He says they weren't bad. Maybe they didn't succeed the way that Moses wanted. But on the other hand, and they got punished, God got very angry. But on the other hand, they went, they did what they were supposed to. They went to the land of Israel. They came back with their own report, right? Their own report was not exactly what it was supposed to be. But on the other hand, it was supposed to be their own report. That's what God wanted. It has to come from inside of them. They weren't convinced that the land of Israel, listen, if you think about it for a moment, this is a whole new thing. The Jewish people up to that time had been like babies in the womb of the mother. When they, they were Egypt, when they were in Egypt, so all of their needs were provided for by the Egyptians. The true, they had to work in terrible slavery and they were beaten and murdered and all these things, but still they didn't have to worry about the day-to-day -day bread and things like that. At least they were safe. But they were safe. I know what story I'm going to tell you today. Okay, good. I hope I remember about the Kloisenberger Rebbe. Remind me if, if I forget. Um, in, in Egypt, there was, when they came out of Egypt, so they were in the desert, God provided them from everything. God protected them, provided for them. In Egypt also, God fought their battles. Now all of a sudden, they're going to have to go into the land of Israel and they're going to have to fight their own battles, maybe all the time. And they're going to have to dig and plant their own food. It's not going to come from heaven anymore. And they're have to going to make wells for water. And the Jewish people said, you know, listen, I, we don't see what is the purpose of all this. Of, you know, what's the point? If we're learning the Torah, we're in the desert. We're, they were afraid. They had never done it before. They were uncertain. They had to throw themselves. No, don't worry. God is going to help you. So listen, God is helping us right now. Why do, why do we have to big, give God a test? God is helping us now. He's raining down. What do we have to go into the land of Israel and then plow and then hope that God is going to give us food? I mean, that's a little bit ingratitude. Here, God is giving us food from heaven all the time. 
right? And, and we can directly thank God. If I go into the land of Israel and I start working, I'm going to say, hey, listen, if I didn't work, I wouldn't have food. So it's not God giving me the food. I'm giving the food, right? I, I'll forget about God. The Jewish people wanted to stay in the desert so they wouldn't forget about God. That's pretty honorable. And Joshua and Caleb, they said, no, 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 you don't understand. That's not the reason God created the world, so that we should remove ourselves from it. That's not the reason that God created the world, that it should scare us. We're here in the world in order to improve the world. That's why we're here. And the, the, the Jewish people couldn't get it. The next generation says everybody that was in the desert, they all died because of this sin, because of they didn't want to go in the land of Israel. They all died. And 40 years later, whatever it is, they went, they did go in with Joshua. But Joshua did the same thing as Moses. He sent spies. We can also, that's what the, this week, Balotcha, that we read, Parashat Bashalach and Shabbat and Mincha, this is made, Nasid, Me'aleha, the Shlemut, the Chamisha, Asar Benisa. Next week is going to be the 15th day of Sivan. 15th day of Sivan. I think it's going to be on Sunday, right? Sunday is the 15th day of Sivan. What's the 15th day of Sivan? Oh, this is a big day. This is a big day. 15th day, that's right, on Sunday. 15th day of Sivan is the day that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1927 was arrested. Okay, well, we're going to see. And he got out like almost a month later from prison. He was sentenced to death and he was tortured. Okay, the, the 15th day of Sivan, the, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe single-handedly defied communism. Unheard of. Unheard of. Uh, okay. The 15th day of Sivan, the 15th day of Sivan says the moon is full. On the month of Sivan, on the month of Sivan, this is the light of the moon. The Jewish people are similar to the moon as the, they're going to re, be renewed. On the 15th day of Sivan, we come to the 16th day of Sivan. That is uh, the four times. What's it here? That's right. Four times four, that's 16 of seven. That's the Tov seven. Then there's the 17th day of seven. That's good. Then there's the 18th day of seven. That's Chai. That's life. Until we come to Shabbat. That was over there in America. The 19th day of seven. That's going to be a Shabbat. By us, it's not going to be this way. The, the, the calendar doesn't work this way. And then afterwards, Chav seven. That there is the idea of tshuva and tzaddikim yachet. Chapsivan is the day there was tremendous massacres by Chmelitsky, Yamach Shemo, like 350 years ago, something. Chapsivan, this is the good time to do tshuva. But it says in the Mogin Avram that the custom is that we fast on the 20th day of Sivan and all the Jews in the land of Poland, of Poland. Because that's like I said, Chmelitsky came and he massacred Jews, who knows, tens, hundreds of thousands of Jews. Nevertheless, our, our rabbis the, in Chabad, we didn't do it. Why? Because we were we didn't live in Poland. That wasn't okay. Nevertheless, we can say that this is not the way <clears throat> that our rabbi Chasro Chasvichalom Maila the Tainis does Esrim Besivan. All the other Jews, religious Jews, especially the Hasidic Jews, because they they fast on the twentieth day of Sivan. That was that was a big that's the, the it was called the massacres of Tachvatat. Terrible, terrible massacres that occurred. And back there is mostly in the lands of Poland. But Chabad, we don't fast. It's not that we're missing it. The, the is that we, Al Yadeh Shalom, by the means of, why don't we do it? Because by means of not fasting, something like Purim, in regarding Yom Kippurim, says that Purim is higher than Yom Kippurim. But Friday, and especially what's known that the 20, number 20 is Keter. We can say that this is one of the things of Tshuva of the Tzaddikim. So the reason that we don't fast on that day is that we make a special type of, it's like it says that Yom Kippurim is not as high as Purim. Yom Kippurim they fast, but Yom Purim says it's higher because they rejoice. So it's not only that the Malchus of Poland, it says that these were the Jews that lived in Poland. Now in Poland, it was very, very good for the Jews for a long time. A lot of these Hasidim uh, are from Poland, Ger Hasidim and uh, and uh, Anyway, a lot of the others, not, not, Vizhnitz, I think, no, Vizhnitz is from, from uh, Hungary, Hungary. Anyway, the, there was millions and millions of Hasidim, hundreds of thousands in any case, in, in, in Poland. It was very, very good. 
and Hitler uh, destroyed almost all of them, wiped out you know millions, whole entire congregations of uh, anyway. So the, that was in Poland. Poland is Yindua that's known that when the Jews came to Poland, they would say, Polin, here is the place we're just going to stay overnight. This is the place we're going to stay for just a certain amount of time. And what night, what's night, the time of exile? Because yeah, that's the true reason why that, that nation is called, that's why they called the, the nation by the name of Polin. They don't know it, but that's why. Because the Jews will be there only in the time of exile. Afterwards, not. The Rebbe didn't want that there should be a Chabad house in Poland. There, there is a, a synagogue because there's a lot of a lot of uh, businessmen that go there in Warsaw. I was there in Warsaw, but except for that, there's not. Well, the Hosef and the Ad, Shalina, <clears throat> this means only in the nighttime. That's the time of darkness. Po Lin. Po means here. Lin means stay overnight. Haino Shapirish Po Lin is She Hamagurim, that you stay there only just for to sleep over, so to speak. Sleep over in the time of exile, but afterwards everyone will go out and they'll come to their true place of every single Jew, name in the land of Israel. And the Gula Mitis Yislam and the total pure, total redemption of the Jewish people, then they won't be staying overnight in any of these places of exile, but the, all the Jews will come back to the Holy Land, to the land of Israel. But I'll be, according to this, uh, even though she had in Nimsheim, even though they were still in exile, but Hashem should help, and at least we do have a place to stay temporarily. He's sending that also in America, and such as temporary. And like it was in the good years in Poland, that the Jewish people lived there in peace, and in special times, it says all the ministers of the country, it says in Poland, they helped the Jews. Like it's known, that many of the uh, big ministers of Poland they used to give their properties into the hands of Jews, a moshkela, they used to call moshka, in order that they would, uh, the Jews would be the managers of their places, because the Jews were honest, and the Jews would uh, would, would benefit the, 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 um, the, the masters. And that, that everybody says the Jews are dishonest and everything, I'm, I'm sure that there are dishonest Jews, and there's no doubt about it, and they stick out like a sore thumb, but in generally speaking, Right, they they were much more honest than the non-Jewish uh, managers of the businesses, and the Jewish people need to they use this for good things for holiness, and that they ultimately that took out all, all of the good from them. <clears throat> and from this, there is also a hint at and serving Hashem, serving Hashem. What is known that we have to learn how to serve God from everything. First of all. A Jew has to know, a Yudi Ladad, a Jew has to know that exile is darkness and exile is nighttime. But what we have to know that this exile that we're in, where Jews don't know that they're Jews and Jews don't realize that we're the chosen people and that we're chosen to improve the world and tell the non Jews how much God loves them and that there's a purpose to every single human being. As long as Jews don't know this, that they have to, that they, they have to live their lives according to the Torah and teach all the non Jews seven wide commandments. As they know, so we're in exile, and that's called darkness. You can't see what's going on, and, but it's only temporary. <clears throat> and this is not the true place where a Jew is supposed to be. And together with this, also we have to know that we have to use wherever the place is, even Poland, Polin, we have to utilize this exile for good and for holiness. Like we said before, put the Aleph into the word Gola. <clears throat> by me, by uh, that a Jew will become. Lo every Laila Ella Ligir. So that God only created the nighttime only for learning Torah by means of using the menucha, the the, <clears throat> the rest, the good things, like in America, England, wherever Jews are, and that they have plenty, they have what they need to learn Torah. That should be that spare time that they have should be used for learning Torah. Kolel also simply in even in Poland, the Sapek Bamakom Shadrush. Rav Umora Derech, that the Jews that are living in Poland, that they should be send uh, rabbis over there, that they should help the Jews and take them out of their exile. Ve Ubakolze, Mitosef, Hadgashi Yatera, Bedorot, Achronim. Here the Rebbe did not talk about, I was thinking about another Sira. On the 15th day of Sivan, 
the Yevsechtia, these were Jews, the communist Jews, they came and they arrested the Rebbe, the free previous Rebbe, and their hope was, the, 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 the plan was that he was supposed to be killed that very night. The same night that they took him in, he was supposed to be shot. And, uh, and these were all Jews that did it. And one or two of them, I think, were even Chabad. They had been. About I mean, communism just inflamed the minds of everybody, everybody, especially the Jews. Oh, they loved it. Right? Communism, we're going to make a new world and we're going to take over the world. Like I say, in Israel, there were kibbutzim that had pictures of Stalin. It was called the illuminator of the world, Shemesh La'amim, Shemesh Ha'amim. And the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe single handedly stood against them. And they sentenced him to death, and miraculously, they mixed things up. Things got mixed up, and they didn't kill him that night, and they couldn't get the papers together to, to, to arrange that he should be killed because they couldn't do things on their own. And eventually, they, so they beat him, and they tortured him, and everything. And finally, miraculously, they just let him go. It was the, the whole thing. We celebrate that. That's Yud-Pay's Thomas. We'll talk about that. Nevertheless, we have to, there's a special emphasis now that we are now at the heels of the heels of the heels. And it was the last, 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 stages of the Mashiach, and especially in our generation, the last generation of exile. <clears throat> Even though that's why we shouldn't, you know, de involve ourselves and take seriously all these terrible things that are happening now, because that's just all the pus that's coming up to the surface, right? The, the main thing is the body of the world is going to be healthy, right? And, and even these people who are doing these terrible, ridiculous things, they're going to realize that they've been fooled, that somehow or other they, they they're making just a mistake. But we have to look at the good part of it. And the good part of it is that God is creating everyone and that everyone is special. And it's all according to the Torah. We have to do as much as we can good. And even though it says that Mashiach is going to come when the generation is proper. And we can say, well, now we have a proper generation now. And especially with the, the, the end, with the last of the last, how do you say, moments of the exile were right at the heels of the Mashiach, like it's explained in the end of Sota, it says, and also the our generation. It comes all the generations which are before that. And we receive all of the good things and all the things in Torah and mitzvahs that the Jews did in the previous generation until what they're the ones that are providing the oil. They're the ones that are lighting these candles, the lamps of, of our generation as a result of the service of the previous generation. I just think of how many millions of Jews there are that died with Shema Yisrael on their lips that were killed by the non-Jews, and we don't even know where they're buried, and nobody even saw their bravery and their courage, and nobody, nobody even saw it. They were alone. There's them and God. But those that power that they did, this comes to us now. Now it comes down, but immediately, this will be the power that will make our flame go up on its own, even more. Adarabah. Davka, at the heels of the foot, the lowest of lowest generations, we have the power to elevate on our own, to elevate all of the generations that were previous, by means of this, that our last generation will mean the first generation of the redemption. Befrat, I mean, I'll just tell you in a short way that that uh, I'm sorry, I just had to go somewhere. I got my car fixed, and it was a that was also a pretty big miracle. Also, that everybody wanted like three thousand dollars to get my car fixed, and I found somebody, and he fixed the whole thing up even better than what they thought for three hundred dollars. Okay, and when I went there, it's like an hour on the train, so I took to fill in with me. Now I put to fill in on a lot of people, you know, I go around putting on to them. But nevertheless, here these people were very sort of stone faced, and everybody was sort of you know with a bitter sort of look. And nevertheless, I just didn't pay any attention to it. And I asked people if they wanted to put on to villain. And people, their faces just, it was, it was almost like theatrical. Their faces just changed totally. Person sitting there, would you like to put on to villain? Oh, yeah, sure. And all of a sudden, they, they lit up. <laughs> it's like putting the olive into the gola. You just couldn't believe it. And the whole thing depended on, on just me asking them. And why did I ask them? Right? Because the Rebbe said that that's what we should do. I, on my own, I would never do it in a million years. And we see there's other Jews that are, you know, wiser than I am and more whatever, but, and they don't go around asking people to put out the fill-in, right? Because <clears throat> the Rebbe made us crazy 
and says you, you should understand that every Jew is a potential lamp to lit up, and eventually we can light up the whole world like that, just by doing good, and especially that Aaron Cohen of our generation, the Aaron is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he showed in a, his love to all the Jewish people, especially, as he said, love this, the brios, just the creations, by means of the good things that he did in spreading out Torah of Amitzvah, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, by, by spreading out God, the, 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 the teachings outward, and our generation is in ke'elu all of a shalom, ki bedoros arishonim, ki even shekeyom, yesh kol echad v'echad me'esrael shaychus v'yadiyas ha-Torah. Nowadays, there aren't any people who are just creations. They don't know anything about Torah and mitzvahs, because every Jew has some sort of a connection to Torah and the commandments. Like, I think I just told you the story the other day, this Russian guy that I met, and he didn't even know he was Jewish. He didn't know he was Jewish. He said, my mother's Jewish, but I'm not Jewish. And I said, yes, you are. And I put the fill in on him. And all of a sudden, he just woke up. So even a person like that, they have a connection to, you know, he came to Israel, I guess they must have some sort of, maybe they told him it's a good place to live. I don't know. <clears throat> but the fact is that there's almost no Jew in the world that doesn't have some sort of a connection, or at least he heard about it, Torah and the commandments. And, and this is all because of the work of the Rebbe's. And especially by means of the Kol Korah, that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he wrote a book. He wrote a, a, a publication, a weekly publication that was called Kol Korah. And he said that immediately if the Jewish people return, immediately there will be the total redemption. Ha-ha-chraza, this announcement that he said, that we're, all we have to do is shine up the buttons for the parade. And he said even more, the buttons have already been shined up. Everyone is, in one instant is going to come, the true, complete redemption. Therefore... And we have to add now a little bit more energy, vitality, joy in completing this work that we have of being prepared for the future redemption. And by means of Torah, the, 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 the commandments are a lamp. The Torah is a light, is the flame. And by means of this, we will illuminate the, everything around us and we'll illuminate the whole entire world. And immediately we'll all go to the Holy Land, to the Holy City, Jerusalem, to the Holy Mountain, to the Holy Temple, holy house and to the holy of holies our children our elders all the jewish people all together and you can say it doesn't seem so because a story told by professor Bronover, and professor Bronover said that um and the the rebbe called him up and you know, he and the, the rebbe told him that he should prepare housing in jerusalem for the russians that are going to come this was like what the 34 years ago something like that <clears throat> And he said that the prepare, there's going to be a lot of Russians, Jews coming from Russia. So he called up one of his friends, or one of his friends called him from Russia. And he said this, he said, listen, the Lubavitch Rebbe is a holy person, and I'll accept what he said. But it's exactly the opposite of what my eyes see. This person said, the KG Bay last night, they came and they arrested my wife. So things are getting worse now. It's like, it's, it's like it was almost, you know, it's heading toward the ages of Stalin. And all of a sudden, this, what was it, Gorbachev, and he was like a hardcore, hardline communist. He really wanted to, you know, he loved communism, wanted to get, all of a sudden he got the idea, I'm going to end communism. And he did. And all of a sudden, so in other words, it looks to us that things are terrible, that things are getting worse and worse, that like it looked at the, 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 the Russians, things are getting worse. And all of a sudden, whoop, that's it, all of a sudden everything. And so it will be to us, God willing, and the total, complete redemption now. No, oh, yom yom, and then I'll tell you the story. I don't want to forget the story. Oh, right.